so welcome everyone and uh, you know i'll share my screen the last time we stopped you know at a point where we had asked a question what is the remedy for christmas or eid or diwali this was the question that we stopped at so let's go with that let's see what is christmas you know we received a lot of replies i think more than 300 and uh, they are very nice I, I like your analysis a lot and all of you are correct i must say but i would like to share with you my own point of view and uh, let's see so you can see here a picture of christmas and what you can see is a lot of gifts also hmm? so what is christmas christmas is celebrated in the western culture such as family gatherings food and drink dancing games and a festive generosity of spirit so let us understand this uh, these things what is christmas and uh, there is a tradition of exchanging gifts and there is the tradition of the seasonal christmas shopping so it is a time when a family and friends they come together these are the qualities of christmas and then the, some groups they arrange meals and shelter or charitable projects for people without a home or with very little money so these are some qualities of christmas let's look at eid what do you see so first word is charity or zakat and uh, it is translated as a fixed percentage of the income a believer is required to give to the poor and it's a obligatory practice ordered more handsomely during ramadan also you have so many social gatherings and then buffet style and uh, there is this iftar parties and uh, things like that and uh, you should practice self discipline self control sacrifice and empathy for those who are less fortunate thus encouraging the actions of generosity and compulsory charity have a look at diwali again you see gifts you see is a common theme and you see people perform cleansing rituals decorate their home gather for feast exchange gifts and light fireworks so you can see some kind of commonality in these biggest festivals of each religion we all have a special day in which we more or less do exactly the same thing isn't it interesting that we all gift we gather we do good things good deeds we are generous and we you know pray to god or whatever like this some religious aspect also is there so these are some aspects now let us see the other side of of these festivals and what is that we shop we spend we splurge also and we have our family we have fun we have food we have feasting we have a holiday we have homecoming and we have happiness so can you see that these are the two sides of these big festivals one is one would say gifting or giving and the other is getting or looking after yourself you know finding your own pleasure in all of these things so you can see this divide here you give and you get you do for others you do for yourself and uh, your goodness and generosity but also there is selfishness what can i get for myself and you can see in some sense a woman principle which is the principle of giving and the man principle which is the principle of of getting for yourself and uh, you have a working day and you have a holiday so these are the two sides of these of these big festivals 
and what are these two sides we can see here in some rubrics you can see dreams of social visit dreams of shopping dreams of parties and pleasure and then you also see the idea he wants to help other people so you want to shop also you want to gather also you want to party also you want to be social also and you also want to help other people these are the essence of christmas eid and diwali and what does remedy does this work out too that is the question for today and when we put it in the rubrics of the repertory you can see that the main remedy that comes is lack humanum and isn't this so interesting that the main festival of each religion is actually depicting the essence of a human being and today we are going to study we are going to understand we are going to introspect into ourselves what is uh, lack humanum and through the study of the remedy lack humanum we are going to know ourselves better understand ourselves better what is lack humanum the milk of the human being by potentizing it and taking it we are experiencing in ourselves the spirit of the human being the characteristic of the human being and it it will it is the most important uh, knowledge that we can have because as human beings we ought to know what it is to be human and today we will uh, understand this very nicely so let this not be a informational lecture but more an experiential lecture look into yourself as i reveal to you what i understood about this remedy and about human beings so i did many provings of lack humanum i did actually three or four huge provings of lack humanum in different countries i did in india i did in germany i did in other places also to big big numbers of people and uh, i will now read only a few of those proving symptoms and you can see the even the code uh, code of the prover uh, below there a7 stroke m is uh, the prover is a male and uh, his number is a7 so let's see what it says two wills constant dilemma of being highly spiritual and god fearing against bouts of being unreligious and sinful a turmoil feel very remorseful and guilty after having done something wrong although while doing it i am unable to control myself later also seek the power to control myself along with repentance can you identify with this feeling you see each one of us is divided into two one wants to be you know god fearing and spiritual and do good good things and the other wants to be you know doing things that uh, were considered sinful or pleasure seeking also isn't it so hmm? so let us uh, let's understand this so you see our uh, our life is divided into good and evil into heaven and hell and uh, this is a unique feature of human beings among all animals among all creatures we know it is the human who is divided in himself between good and bad heaven and hell like this mm -hmm. let us understand this a little further another prover persistent thoughts of how to improve my work while at the same time the idea kept coming to me of being in a five star hotel and watching movies on television you see this divide also between improving oneself rising to one's potential and on the other side being lazy indolent you know uh, in some sense hedonistic seeking pleasure also huh? this divide isn't it so in our own selves i feel it all the time i don't know about you all the time this this conflict of interest in in ourselves see this another prover obsessed about individuality 
versus group conformity in a dilemma whether I should give more importance to my individuality and speak and question freely or keep quiet like the rest of the group. In the end, I, feel, I felt I should give more importance to my individuality and its needs since my motive was to learn rather than bother about what the rest of the group were thinking and how they are feeling. So should I, you know, just blend in with the group or should I stand out as an individual? This conflict also. And uh, you see, the question also is, am I an individual or am I just a part of a group? And uh, if you see, we are divided also. We have a name and a surname, isn't it? So all of us. Yeah? So the name represents our individuality. The surname represents our being a part of a family or a group or a community also, isn't it so? And uh, you see, we have income, but we have to pay tax. Income is what belongs to you. Tax is for the group. And uh, so in some sense, selfishness and selflessness. So we are divided also in this story, huh? isn't it so? So if you see this movie, Three Idiots, uh, you can see that uh, two friends are searching for a lost companion and they re revisit their college days and recall memories of a friend who inspired them to think differently, even though the rest of the world called them idiots. So when you think for yourself, when you become an individual, when you express your own individuality, uh, people can call you names also. See, so there is a, a risk in expressing your own self, but there is this urge also to do that. This is the divide, you know, it is much easier to blend in, but there is an urge to be individual. This is very, very specific to the human being more than any other creature that we know. So here, feeling cut off from my friend circle, I don't want to be with them or I'm unable to maintain a relationship with them. I feel that if they don't want me, I should leave them alone and be free. I have done a lot of things for them, but they give me nothing in return. They reject me because I'm not any use to them. And uh, they have chosen their path and I must choose mine. So what do we see here? That, you know, I am giving, 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 but they are not giving me anything in return, you see? So this idea of, you know, I keep giving, but I get nothing. This is very interesting also. And you see here also, he says, you know, you love your mother, brother, relatives and friends, but uh, these relations only cause you pain. You see this transaction, you see, I want to do, but you know, am I getting for myself anything? This is an interesting question here. Now let's see one more proving. My younger cousin brother has an auditory handicap, but he is able to follow lip movements. He is attempting, attempting to speak, and I am teaching him names of colors: red, yellow, and black. This is so interesting. This proving symptom. What? Why is it interesting? Because of the word cousins, the word handicap, and the word helping somebody. So who is a cousin? A cousin is not your immediate family. A cousin is an extended family. So you have a choice whether you want to help the cousin or you don't want to help. You see your family you are obliged to. But cousin you may help, you may not help. So how you treat your cousin decides really who you are, not how you treat your family also. Not somebody whom you are not obliged to, or obliged to help. And who? The one who needs it, the handicapped one. Are you going to help that one? That is the question. So helping an unknown sick person and assuring him that I'm fully responsible, an unknown person, in some sense, the whole humanity is your cousin, isn't it? They are all your distant relatives. So are you going to help the one who needs help, the one who is handicapped, the one who is sick, the one who is old. 
this is what humanity is all about there are two sides of it also isn't it that's what we are going to see so what is the other side i was waiting at a bus stop with an elderly person who was unable to walk properly and i made a way for him to climb in when the bus arrived you know that guy got in and i was refused entry my god i go to help other people and i get left behind should i do good or not if i do good i feel good but what is what what do i get you know i get left behind nobody gives me anything so should i give or should i not give should i do for others or for myself this question is constantly in the human mind isn't it so constant conflict i am giving you this webinar am i doing it for you or am i doing it for me what is the answer you see this is a question for me also and this question actually took me uh, through this proving to answer this question and the answer you will get at the end of this this webinar you will also get the answer what is true am i doing this webinar for you or for me what the answer let's see see another uh, proving i am living in a hut and suddenly i am aware that a hindu nationalist politician who is responsible for riots is coming to rape my sister and me he looks like a villain out of a hindi film i am dead scared and i ask my sister to run away with me although she asks me not to bother i take her hand and i run we are running and we come to a house in which a woman calls out to us and finding out who, why we are running she offers us shelter we hide in her kitchen and i am scared but i have confidence in this woman although she is a hindu then through the window i see some members of my muslim community who are returning from a religious ceremony they are surprised to see me there then the daughter of our hostess helped me to climb down from the window what a beautiful proving you see first of all there are two communities these two communities two religions are at war with each other they are hurting each other they can kill each other also they can rape each other they can do anything and then you see that a person from the opposite community is helping this is humanity also isn't it and this is the subject of the movie schindler's list so schindler is a german and in the time of the nazi germany he rescues a huge number of jews at a at a very severe personal risk and so he celebrated it's a true story actually this is the kind of thing that you know uh, selflessness in some sense and helping people even though they belong to another community and you are putting yourself at a risk these are the human you know dilemmas human heroes also you can say okay let's see a little bit more so you see the need to belong to a group the need for religion religion is like a tribe also you see we what is religion actually it has many meaning but one of the meaning of it is that you belong to like a tribe a tribal mentality also hmm? and uh, okay so we see i was traveling in a car with a group of people we were all in the nude i did not recognize any of them as being familiar and we were going out to a picnic to the beach another uh, car passed by and the other group of people were also naked we were all waving and shouting at each other we were neither surprised nor embarrassed about being naked or being in the company of naked people it seems okay so very interestingly human being is the only creature that wears any kind of clothes or hides something about himself you see no other animal does this or wants to hide its you know some private parts or something like that and the sense of embarrassment is very very human why is this so because of the divide within ourselves that there is a part of us which we think is good and a part of which we think is secret bad 
not to be shown, embarrassing, and so forth. Isn't it so? Hmm? Animals have no such dilemma, so they are very happy being in the nude or shitting anywhere or doing anything. There's no problem for them. But we, oh my God. Huh? So this feeling of nude, embarrassed, shit also denotes good and bad. Shit represents the unclean part of ourselves. It's a symbol of our own sense of, one would say, guilt or our own sense of, you know, something bad in me. Huh? This is what shit is all about. Eh? Look at this dream. It's, so this dream or it's such a beautiful oriental children with their heads shaved, dressed up like monks are inside a house. An oriental woman is holding them captive and is forcing them to do something. The house has two doors. The front door is guarded by armed men. One of the boys manages to evade the woman and escape through the back door. He is running downhill and he is joined by a young woman in an oriental garb who encourages him to run fast. They continue to run till they come to a flight of steps which they climb. At the top of the stairs, there is a cupboard next to a house. The woman up opens the door of the cupboard and there are two short, weird looking divine people inside. The woman places the boy in the midst of these two people or gods and gives him some advice regarding his mother. Then she closes the door of that cupboard. The idea that this small boy will become a great monk. Just imagine the beauty of this dream that the prover got after taking this remedy. What is the beauty? Let us understand. There is a book by Joseph Campbell, which is known as the hero with a thousand faces. And this book describes, you see, the mythology of different heroes from different countries. It may be Rama, Buddha, Jesus, you know, whoever it is, you know, and the different heroes. And what is common? What is the common thing about these heroes? He describes it as a cycle. You see, it's a man uh, starts like this. He's called to adventure. Then he gets supernatural aid. And then he goes through challenges and temptations, comes to a transformation, an atonement, and then he comes back, he returns back as an enlightened being, as an advanced being, as a hero, you see? And exactly the same process this dream follows. This boy gets out, makes an adventure, he's helped by, you know, by guardians, by supernatural aid. He goes into a box, it, along with the gods, he gets revelation and he comes back and he's going to be a wise person. And this is the story of the Buddha also. This is the story of Rama who went to Vanvas for so many years. This is the story of Jesus. This is the story of Muhammad who all, you know, ventured out on their own. They expressed their individuality. They got out. They made an adventure. They were helped by divine creatures. They went and did their penance and then they came back as heroes, as enlightened beings and then they took the world ahead. This is the story of the hero with a thousand faces. You see, this is very human to be like that. And this is also the story, you see, of the movie uh, Lagan. Because you see, in, in this, this is a movie that is so, so typical of this lack humanum. Let us understand the theme of this movie. What is Lagan? It's a, it's a story about a small, you know, the people of a small village in British Victorian India. And they have to pay a very, very, you see, uh, they pay a very heavy tax. Lagan is tax. And uh, they, they, they cannot, they just, just, they are exploited, you see. These people are so exploited by the British and uh, they are further exploited and there is a drought and they are forced to pay this tax. And then you see the one of the, um, one of, one of, one of them, the hero, he goes and he, and then there is a kind of a, a bet that is placed and the British guy says, if you beat us in cricket, you will, 
uh, be, you know, you don't have to pay the tax. But if you lose, you will pay double the tax. And uh, you see, and these guys don't know cricket, you see. They have no idea what the hell it is, you see. There's a British game. These are villagers. And, uh, and the hero says, no, I will take this challenge, you know. No? And then the whole village is very um, angry with him. And they say, how can you, you are, you know, you're jeopardizing all of us. And, you know, what are you doing? And he says, no, no, I will do it. And he, he is then helped again by, you know, the sister of the same British guy, you see. So she's the helper in this point. And then they do the penance, which is learning and learning and learning and practicing the game in very difficult circumstances. And then they come out, you know, and they emerge uh, victorious and they bring the fruit of this victory to the entire village. You see, the entire community benefits from this hero. So what are the themes we see here? We see the exploitation. We see the class distinction, very typical of human being is the word exploitation. We exploit, we exploit, we exploit. We exploit people below us. We exploit the animals. We exploit the nature. We exploit, you know, everything that we can exploit, you see. You know, there is a joke like this. They say that capitalism is the exploitation of man by man and socialism is exactly the reverse of that, which also is the exploitation of man by man. So that's our nature, you see. And then th there is a class distinction, the exploited and the exploiter. You see, the victim aggressor is there. And this is also the story of imperialism. This is the story of conquest. This is the story of slavery. This is the human story, you see. And, uh, and then you see the rise of the hero as an individual. You see, the, uh, the group by itself is lethargic. It cannot go forward. It wants status quo. It doesn't want to disturb the status quo. It's only the individual who, you know, who is the hero, who says, no, I will, you know, do something. And he comes out and the whole group is against him. Oh, I don't want, you know, you, they crucified Jesus. They shot Gandhi, you know, things like that. They don't want this guy. But he persists and he does his story and he makes an adventure. He gets help from divine forces. He faces the criticism of the group. He works with himself and then he returns with victory and the fruit gets shared by all. This is the exact story of Lagan, you see. And that's why Lagan became one of the biggest hits of uh, Hindi, Hindi film. You see, because it is such a human story. That's why Diwali and Eid and, and uh, Christmas are the most popular festivals because they represent the total story of the human being. If something is that popular, if something is that universal, it has to represent the universal human psyche. That is what I'm trying to explain to you. That it cannot be, you know, an odd remedy like aconite or cannabis or something like that. It has to represent the essence of the human being. So all the, if you want to see the blockbuster films, the, the biggest hits like Schindler's List or Gandhi or, you know, Lagan or, you know, movies like this, their essence is human. The essence is the, the struggle of the human being. You see, that's what it's all about. Gandhi is the same story. You see, while India was, you see, under the British, this guy, you know, he stood up and he said, I will find a way and a way which is very different from everybody else, the way of nonviolence, the way of the truth. And they said, what, I mean, what can you do? You know, one man nonviolent, I mean, against an empire, are you crazy? But then he, you know, he did his penance in South Africa and he came back as a hero and he took the nation ahead. This is his story also. So every story you can see of a, of, a, of a hero, of a victory, is this story of a human being. And also in Lagan, you see the story of love and sacrifice, you see, like Titanic, the group togetherness and support, the faith in God, the good versus evil, the rising to your own potential, and the individual, uh, individual will versus the group conformity. This also is, this is all the elements of lac humanum are, are in, um, 
in this movie lagan and no doubt that it became such a such a big hit uh, in the in the film industry so we can also write a story called a villain with a thousand faces isn't it just like the hero has a thousand faces the villain also has a thousand faces and the story of the villain is also the same let's see what is that story hmm? the story is here a revered professor this is also from the proving of lack of man a revered professor was trying to make sexual advances at my niece we were in the same van like cousins and he was trying to lift her skirt up and trying to touch her breast i was watching from far and i wondered such a revered person was doing this and why was she allowing this to happen to her this is the villain who is the villain let us see who is the villain a villain means a mean evil unprincipled person no principles and uh, one who deceives for personal profit and one who abuses someone or something this is a villain this on every movie you will see one villain also every story there's a villain and the villains do this so what is the difference between the hero and the villain the hero is one who does for the community the villain is one who wants for himself this is the difference the selfish and the selfless isn't it so so that's what alexander solzhenitsyn the very famous russian novelist he said the battle line between good and evil runs through the heart of every man in in each one of us there is the hero and there is the villain and they are constantly fighting with each other should i be hero or should i be villain should i give or should i get should i grab or should i be generous what should i do should i be principled or unprincipled should i should i be a, 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 you know a part of society or you know uh, my my own self and for my own self me for me you see that's the question isn't it and there's the divide and see here john steinbeck famous american author he says we only have one story all novels all poetry are built on the never ending contest in ourselves of good and evil this is our story every story is this story he says like this whether it is ramayan it is mahabharat same story the war between good and evil isn't it so that's our war that's our internal war there is no outside there's no villain there there's no hero there there's a hero here and a villain here just like this isn't it so and they are fighting inside look at us this is what it means to be human this is human this is nothing to worry about you have to know this within yourself and accept this as your humanity and nothing to worry about nothing to feel bad about and nothing to you know get tense about so you see this divide between the whole humanity is divided between capitalism and communism what's capitalism grab what's communism nothing for you everything for the community grabbing versus sharing private versus public everything is private private hospital private school private house and there is a public school public hospital everything public material versus spiritual you see and uh, exploitation versus benevolence the ravan versus ram the devil versus the angel the war versus the peace the conquering of others versus the victory over your own self this is the divide this is the battle that we fight inside and the dalai lama he says the true hero is one who conquers his own anger and hatred not the one who conquers others hmm hmm this is the thing dusron ki jay se pehle khud pe jay kare before you win over others have you won over yourself you know you know the song or not humko man ki shakti dena man vijay kare humko man ki shakti dena man vijay kare 
कीजे ऐसे पहले खुद पे जय करे हमको मन की शक्ति देना एंड देन यू सी इन द सेम इरा लिव्स टू पीपल हु रिप्रेजेंट द एग्जैक्ट टू साइड्स ऑफ आवर ओन डिवाइड you see gandhi on the one hand and you see hitler on the other and you can see how many clothes gandhi wears and how many hitler that itself is a difference you see and uh, and a very interesting anecdote in the life of gandhi is people forced him in the middle of you know just before the war began actually let me see the date it 1939 just before the war began they forced him to write a letter to hitler and he wrote it and uh, this is preserved in mani bhavan in mumbai i have actually seen the letter and it reads like this you see it's such a nice letter from one side of the brain one side of human to the other side of human you see so beautiful this letter is you can say this this letter is from here of you to here of you what does he write he said dear friend he writes to hitler dear friend eh? friends have been urging me to write to you for the sake of humanity this is the humanity but i have resisted their request because of the feeling that any letter from me would be an impertinence something tells me that i must not calculate and that i must make my appeal for whatever it may be worth it is quite clear that you are today the one person in the world who can prevent a war which may reduce humanity to a savage state must you pay that price for an object however worthy it may appear to you to be will you listen to the appeal of one who has deliberately shunned the method of war not without considerable success anyway i anticipate your forgiveness if i have erred in writing to you i remain your sincere friend mk gandhi see what i mean what can you say about this letter a man of peace telling a man of war you know is it worth it is it worth to reduce humanity to a savage state to get something for yourself is it worth it for you can you think about it and i'm really sorry if i said something wrong look at look at that letter unbelievable letter in the beginning of the war mm. of course hitler never replied probably never read it i don't know and look at this uh, impersonation of hitler by charlie chaplin in the movie great dictator and see the message that he gives us i'm sorry i don't want to be an emperor that's not my business i don't want to rule or conquer anyone i should like to help everyone if possible jew gentile black man white we all want to help one another human beings are like that we want to live by each other's happiness not by each other's misery we don't want to hate and despise one another in this world there's room for everyone and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone the way of life can be free and beautiful but we have lost the way greed has poisoned men's souls has barricaded the world with hate has goose stepped us into misery and bloodshed we have developed speed but we have shut ourselves in machinery that gives abundance has left us in want our knowledge has made us cynical our cleverness hard and unkind we think too much and feel too little more than machinery we need humanity more than cleverness we need kindness and gentleness without these qualities life will be violent this is uh, charlie chaplin in the movie great dictator watch the whole a uh, speech in youtube it's amazing watch this speech but see what he talks about hmm? so here somebody says you know who says this shams tabrizi you know the companion of uh, rumi don't search for heaven and hell in the future both are now present whenever we manage to love without expectation without calculation without negotiation we are in heaven whenever we fight when we hate we are in hell don't search for it anywhere else it is within us 
It's what, how we see and how we perceive and how we behave that creates heaven, that creates hell. Isn't it so? And uh, there is one more thing that, you know, that, that's very important. That this war, this battle that goes on within us, you know, between good and evil, between heaven and hell, between selfish and selfless, this is our human nature. This is our human nature. This is our human nature. Huh? And there it is going to be. Till we are alive, till we are human, this battle is going to be. And nobody is good and nobody is evil. We are all fighting the same battle within us. Don't worry about it. But when we start to observe this battle, then we rise above ourselves, even as a human being, you see, when we see this battle and say, oh, this is, oh, this is the human nature. Okay, this is human nature. But who are we? We then we rise above that, we above this fight. And what we become then is the spirit, you see, rising above good and evil, accepting the two parts of ourselves and rising above both because we are both and we are none of them. We are above them. We are the watcher, the witness, the spirit, which is manifested as a human being. That spirit, which is manifested as a human being, has the problem. But the spirit itself does not have a problem. I don't know if you understand what I mean. The spirit that takes the shape of a human, takes the qualities of a human, the qualities of this good and evil fight. But the spirit itself is free from it. And when you experience that, this is spirituality. And when we do that, when we rise above good and evil, and when we rise above all of this, then every day is our Christmas. Every day is our Eid. Every day is our Diwali. And this was put very beautifully in a poem by Harivan Shrai Bachchan, where he says, you know, he, he gives the metaphor of, of alcohol, of the spirit, of the, of the bar, of the Madhiralai, he calls it. But that Madhiralai is not a, not a real alcohol shop. It's the spirit of life. When you rise in your spirit, he says, Ek baras me ek bar hi jagti holi ki jwala, ek bar hi lakti bazi jalti deepon ki mala, dunia walo kintu kisi din a Madhiralai me dekho, Din ko holi, raat diwali, roz manati madushala. He says, once a year we celebrate holi, once a year we celebrate Christmas, once a year we celebrate Eid. But when you come into your own spirit, every day is your Christmas, every day is your holi, every day is your Eid, and every day is your diwali. This is what he says. एक बरस में एक बार ही जगती होली की ज्वाला एक बार ही लगती बाजी जलती दीपों की माला दुनिया वालों किंतु किसी दिन आ मदिरालय में देखो दिन को होली रात दिवाली रोज मनाती मधुशाला दिन को होली रात दिवाली रोज मनाती मधुशाला so that's where we have to get to. Rise above. Come to your spirit. Enjoy this duality. Don't get confused. This is you. Till you're alive as a human, this is going to be. And um, understand that. So I want to give you some resources where we can, you see, learn more. Provings. I did proving. In my book of provings, you get the whole proving of lack humanum. You can read Soul of Remedies. Or you can go to WWR online series in online hmp.com. Hope. So many beautiful lectures on hope. Go there, hope.synergyhomeopathic.com. Use your time so fully in this lockdown period. There are many of 
meditation of my meditation videos and other videos of other song of all teachers on YouTube for free. You can please watch them. Synergy homeopathic software is what I use and what helps me a lot. You can have a look at that. And the other song is, the, is our temple of uh, you know, learning. These are the resources I can help you with. Your feedback and queries as usual to um, hope at synergyhomeopathic.com. And uh, today we have a surprise guest. Who is it? Is Mr. Rajiv Bajaj. And uh, you can see him on the screen. On the, you can see him upside down also and you can see him straight also at the same time, both views. He's a yoga enthusiast. He is the inspiration behind finding, you know, the Prana a homeopathic yoga center in uh, Pune. And uh, for me, he's my hero because he um, goes against everybody. I mean, if there is somebody who is an individual, it's him. He speaks his mind on homeopathy, on yoga, on economy, on, you know, the current lockdown crisis. He speaks and, uh, you know, people say, wow, you know, I, we wish we could speak like that and, you know, express ourselves. And uh, he's, he's been one of the greatest supports for homeopathy in, uh, in India and all over the world. And I have uh, invited him very kindly uh, to, to say a few words to greet us because I know all of you know him and uh, you have heard of him, but many of you might not have seen him. And uh, so it's such a great pleasure to uh, welcome him. I'm going to take the screen off so that he can be on full screen. Hello, Dr. Rajan. Hello. Thank you. And uh, hello, everyone. Greetings, everyone. Or I should say, given what Dr. Rajan just explained, uh, happy Eid, happy Diwali, and uh, happy Christmas from Pune to all of you. I must confess, this is my first time ever uh, to appear on a homeopathic webinar. And if some years ago, somebody had said to me that I would be doing this one day at uh, 9 o'clock, on a Sunday evening, probably I would have said to that person, my friend, um, I think you are very unwell, you need help. You are in the fourth state of absolute delusion in the sensation system. But uh, I would have been wrong uh, because all of you have accommodated me today. So uh, thank you very much for that privilege. Uh, Dr. Rajan has as usual been extremely kind and generous disproportionately as always. Um, the last few weeks, I have been doing what little I could do to support homeopathy in uh, helping all of us cope with this uh, present crisis. And the reason I chose to do that and invest my time behind that effort for the last five, six weeks is simply this. Uh, because in this time, when the world is going through such a difficult time, I feel just like the heroes in Schindler's List and just like the heroes in Lagan, uh, you are all heroes. Every homeopath that is uh, struggling and working hard to help their family, friends and patients cope with this problem. Unfortunately, even when half the world doesn't believe in us sometimes, you know, so uh, to, to swim against that tide and to do your best every day, and to make every day as a Eid and a Diwali and a Christmas, despite the presence of such a devastating virus, uh, makes, you, makes you all my heroes. But friends, I want to share something more important with you today, which is that in these last few weeks that I have also been at home, which is where I'm speaking with you from, once again, homeopathy has given me more than I have been able to give homeopathy, much more. And you know, this morning, a friend sent me a quote of the actor Robin Williams that perfectly describes that. Robin Williams said, I thought the worst thing in life was to be left alone, but I was wrong. The worst thing in life is to be left with people 
who make you feel that you are alone. But thanks to homeopathy, I have not felt alone at all. And thanks to homeopaths, I have not felt alone at all these last five, six weeks. I have been networking, talking, and discussing, and arguing, and fighting with, with people in the PMO, in the health ministry, in IUSH, in CCRH, in MCH, all the way down to the Pune police, Pimpri Chinchwad police, railway police, rural police, everyone. And I have enjoyed all of it. I have made a new network, which I would never have made just as managing director of Bajaj Auto. I have made a lot of friends. I have found a lot of people who, like me, believe in homeopathy. And it has been a wonderful experience to be surrounded by homeopathy and by homeopaths at this time. I just want to say that uh, there are difficult days ahead of us. Uh, this problem is not behind us yet. I know you will all do your best. I will do the best that I can in my own small way for all of you. I wish you all the courage in the words of our founder, dare to be wise. May you always dare to be wise. May you always follow your path of the gentle, rapid and permanent cure. And may you prove right the words of Gandhiji, who uh, Dr. Rajan alluded to so much right now, when he said, and Gandhiji said, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. And friends, I really believe that in this crisis, homeopaths with their science are going to shake the world in a gentle way and show us all a new path forward so that we will never fear uh, being hit by something like this again in the future. So thank you all once again for making my day. It is a delight to be with all of you. Thank you for accommodating. Thank you so much. It's uh, such, a, such a joy to have you with us.